Stan Gibalisco here. A viewer has requested that I identify individual components in chapter 26, in the figures of chapter 26 of Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, edition number 6. <clears throat> but you will find the chapter on amplifiers and oscillators uh, in every edition of this book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. What we're looking at here is a generic Class A amplifier using an NPN bipolar transistor. By now you should uh, know that these two resistors, I haven't even given them component designators, serve to provide the proper bias to the NPN transistor so that it will operate in Class A and this is an audio amplifier intended for a minimum distortion. Uh, therefore, it should be biased for Class A. And these uh, values of these resistors are chosen f uh, with that in mind, along with the value of the emitter resistor, which limits the current flowing through the entire amplifier and also helps with the biasing that these two resistors provide. This bypass capacitor ensures that the emitter remains at ground for signal. This blocking capacitor prevents uh, the amplifier from disrupting any of the characteristics that might uh, that the previous stage of the system might have. In other words, it keeps any direct current from appearing in that circuit. It it isolates more or less the circuits for direct current while letting signals pass. The same is true here for C1, the output. Now the collector current flows through this resistor to the plus 12 volts and that I'm indicating direction of electrons in the current flow because that's the easiest way to understand it. Uh, it's not the conventional quote-unquote method but it is, it is the most intuitive, without quotes, method. Electrons move in the direction of the current, intuitively. Capacitor C1 keeps the ground here from grounding the collector, which would short out the entire amplifier. Instead, what you get here is an AC audio signal across resistor R1 all the way across the whole resistor and but it's a potentiometer as you'll notice and you can pick off various amounts of that AC all the way from none down at the very bottom here when the wiper is down at the very bottom to all when it's at the top and um, anything in between. You should use an audio taper potentiometer for this Purpose, so that the volume control will appear to increase and decrease the volume in a smooth manner. If you use a linear taper potentiometer, you will seem to get all of the volume crammed at one end or the other of the, of the potentiometer. Uh, it'll increase very slowly and then rapidly in, increase or vice versa. You don't want that, so this is, you have to wire it up in the correct direction so as to counteract that uh, intuitive ear-brain effect that makes things nonlinear. In other words, it, the, the resistor is nonlinear, your brain is nonlinear, and they cancel each other out. And it sounds like a linear control, R1 adjusting the volume from zero to maximum. C2 is a blocking capacitor that prevents this ground and its variable resistance from affecting the any characteristics of the stage that appears at the output or even a speaker or well not it wouldn't be a speaker probably it would probably be a headset you'd need an amplifier for a speaker because this entire amplifier is designed for low level operation that is low power and if you want power uh, at your output you're going to have to use an audio power amplifier but your volume control is already provided for you here the only caveat is that the position of this volume control is going to affect the impedance 
that appears at the output and therefore it is going to vary the impedance that any subsequent stage will see. This may or may not matter. It shouldn't, seeing as uh, the only thing the impedance variability will affect is the volume. It will just sort of make things a, a little bit more complicated than they might be in an ideal world. But if you want an ideal world, my friend, you're on the wrong planet probably in the wrong solar system, certainly in the wrong solar system, and maybe even in the wrong galaxy. As for universes, I've only dwelt in four uh, different universes, and uh, um, all four of them had flaws. <laughs> that is your basic volume control. Bias resistors, um, emitter resistor, which helps to regulate the bias. I've been through all of that. I don't want to repeat it. It'll make the video too long. Hopefully that will give you some idea as to the function of each individual component in the figure in figure in chapter 26. I think it's figure 26-8 for volume control in a low level audio amplifier. Stan Jubilisco signing off. Until next time, so long.